In this problem, we're asked to find a when we know that the probability of a z-score being less than a is equal to a given probability, 0 0.0285. So to answer this question, you should start by doing a sketch. And you should really always start by doing a sketch whenever you're working with the standard normal distribution. It will make a big difference in how well you understand the question and your level of success or your success rate with these types of questions. So if you are not doing sketches for these questions, then you are doing yourself a huge disservice because even though I am an expert and I've been doing this a long time, I still will make mistakes when I don't do a sketch. So it is extremely important for someone who is a student of introductory statistics to take the time to do a sketch. So first of all, I notice that the probability notation shows a less than symbol. And that means that we're dealing with a left area. Okay. And if these are, if this is standard normal, which we assume it is because we're talking about Z scores, right? So you, whenever you see the Z as part of a question or part of the notation, you should know that that means that you're dealing with a normal distribution, which means it's bell-shaped, and additionally, this is a standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and z-scores are on the horizontal scale, like so. All right, now, knowing that, and knowing that this is a left area, and the area, I know this is an area, I should mention why I know this is an area, because the notation here, P of Z less than A, this notation we need to be familiar with at this point in the course, and it means the probability of. So when I read the P in the parentheses Z less than A, close parenthesis, I read that in my head as the probability that Z is less than A. So what this means is you're selecting an individual Z-score, and you're selecting it randomly, and you want to know what's the probability that it'll be less than some specified value. The specified value is actually not specified here, it's unknown, but they did specify the actual probability, and probabilities are always areas under the bell curve. So I know that this is an area, this number here, 0 0.0285, this is an area of, the sh of a shaded region under the curve, and furthermore, I know it's a left shaded region because of the less than symbol. Now, I don't know exactly where to put the A. That is the question we're trying to answer. Should the A go here, or maybe over here, or perhaps here, or here? I mean, there's, you know, literally infinite places it could go. So how do we ballpark where it should go to make our sketch? Well, this area says 0 0.0285. Now, if A was right in the middle at zero, and I shaded the region to the left, this shaded region over here would be an area of 0.5. And this is because, um, this is another property we should know about the normal distribution by now, is that the total area underneath the curve is one. And this is because it's a probability distribution. So all the probabilities have to be accounted for without any overlap. And so all the probabilities have to make a total of one meaning zero probability means something that can't happen, and one probability means something that is certain to happen, and then you have everything in between. And so everything in between should add up to all the possibilities that something is certain to happen. Okay, so now, with that background established, I know that if I set A at zero, then the area to the left would be 0.5, which is a great deal larger than 0.0285. So what this tells me is that I know that my z-score is going to be negative and that the area to the left of it is going to be quite small, so it's probably pretty far over. But I don't, I don't have to figure it out exactly. I just want to get a good idea of what I'm looking at. So A, if A is somewhere on the left side of the z-scale with negative z-scores and the area to the left of that boundary is 0 0.0285, that's this shaded region here, then I can use that information to find the boundary. Now, there's a couple ways that I can go about this. I can go and look up this area in the z-score table. And if I look up 0 0.0285 in the table, the closest thing is right here, 0 0.0287. And then I can work my way out to find the z-score that corresponds with that. So 
the z-score um, would be negative 1.9 as the first two digits, 1.9, and then the last digit, since it's in the first column, would be zero. So negative 1.90 would be the z-score rounded to two decimal places. So that would be the best answer if you're using the z-score table. And the reason that I could just go and look directly in the z-score table is because the z-score table is set up with areas to the left all shown in the body of the table. The z-scores are on the left column and top row. And if it's a negative z-score, you'll see that the probabilities are smaller. And then once you get point past a z-score of zero, and you're going into the positive z-score table where the probabilities are greater than 0.5. Right, so that's another reason you might know it was negative, because if you're looking for 0 0.085, which is what they gave us here, um, 0 0.0285, the closest thing we found would only be found in the negative z-score table. All right, now, um, there's another way to do these. If you use technology, and um, we're, we've been learning how to use Excel in this course, so with Excel, to find a left area, you would use norm.dist, um, and then you can use norm.dist to find different types of areas indirectly, as shown. However, we know the area here. What we want is the z-score, so we need to use norm.inverse and make sure to put in a left area along with the mean and the standard deviation. So now we're going to do that here, and hopefully we will get an answer that is very close to this. It should be very close to this, if not the same and I'm going to put in the 0 0.0285 that was given, the mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, and again, I know the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 because it is, um, their z-scores, because z was in the notation there. So now when I press enter, we see that this is going to round off to the same answer. All right, now let's do another version of this question. So if you do this question multiple times, you might get different um, probabilities given. This time the probability that was given was less than 0.5. So now I'd like to show you one that is greater than 0.5. All right, so I just made this up, right? So the probability now that they're giving us is 0.7231. So if I start to answer this question again, and once again I know, remember, if A is in the center, then each of the sides of the curve have an area of 0.5, but this is an area that's greater than 0.5, so that means that my A should be further over to the right. How far exactly? Not sure, but I know it's going to be further to the right. Okay, so now, um, with an area of 0.71, uh, excuse me, 0 0.7231 to the left, I can easily use norm.inverse to find the answer. Putting in the left probability, then the mean of zero and standard deviation of one, and then I get my answer that way. Now, um, other versions of this question could be that they give you a greater than symbol. And if they were to say, um, let's say the area stayed the same, but it was a greater than symbol here, then all that would change is we would know that um, A has to be negative z-score because now we have a larger area to the right, larger than 0.5, which would put the smaller area on to the left of A. And we would get that area by doing 1 minus 0 0.7231, since we know that the whole area under the curve is 1. So if you know one side of the boundaries area, then you can implicitly find the other um, side of the, um, the other area. So now using norm.inverse, remember it always wants a left area. So I had to use 1 minus the given probability because I knew they were giving us a right-sided probability and then I'm able to find the answer that way and notice that it is negative as I expected it should be. I didn't get the exact right placement of this but I had at least the, um, I at least knew, correctly knew that I was, should be getting a negative z-score as the answer. So I hope that was helpful. See you in the next video.